Oh, no, nah, that's not going to work. I'll do a fetlock if I keep doing that. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'd know just how handy I am at DIY. Okay, you got me. My strategy is lots of nails and lots of screws. So I do my best. And the reason I bring you these videos is because I'm hoping that if I can give you some ideas, you're gonna do it a lot better than I can. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a few mistakes and one pretty major one that I made with this raised garden bed trellis tunnel that I absolutely love and we've been growing a ton of crops in it. And after several years of good use, it's now starting to develop a few major problems that to be quite honest, I should have foreseen right at the beginning and not let them happen at all. Anyway, I'm going to show you how we're going to correct those problems. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a lot of hard work. So let's get into it. Oh. So basically what has happened is this raised bed garden here, this big long one, is starting to fall over. The pressure of the soil and the lean of the land means that it was inevitably going to fall this way. There is a more, oh, cooker bar just scared the cooker out of me. I haven't got any worms for you. You'll have to wait until I start digging. That's the next part of the video. Boy, I tell you what, here's a pushy kookaburra. When I built these beds, I built them mostly out of recycled wood. Wood that I had lying around, wood that we got from our renovations of our back deck, things that I could salvage. And unfortunately, a lot of them are now rotting. But it's not just that these posts have rotted and making them buckle over. There's one major thing that I did wrong, and that was, I didn't bury these posts in. I just left them on ground level. I might have dug them in just slightly, but not enough to give this garden bed the strength that it needs. If you're building a raised garden bed on level ground, well, there's no real push either way. You can get away with putting in some sturdy posts and the bed's not gonna really lean over. It's just gonna stay in place. But in this case, I should have realized that the beds over time might lean back down towards the hill. So I should have dug these posts in at least I reckon 400 to 600 mil right down to give the bed the structural support it needs. The other thing I did was, and I thought it was clever at the time, I suppose this wasn't a bad idea, was to get some braces and put these braces across so that it would keep the garden bed together and wouldn't bow out like it is now. But what's happened is, can you see how it's kinking in? Because the whole bed is getting pulled over, these braces are going with it and pulling this side of the bed over with it. There we go. There you go, that's it straightened up. All right, let the digging begin. I'm actually gonna drop it here and then shovel it back in when I'm done. Right, so I've finished digging this trench out. Hopefully that's enough digging. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a bit of force. These tie downs here, they hold about 600 kilograms or over half a ton. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap them around these posts, probably use about three or four, and I'm gonna ratchet it from this other side here and hopefully Ratcheting it will pull this bed up and not this bed over. If, if I ratchet 
and it pulls that bed over, I'll just, I'll just be crying. That's what you'll see for the end of this video. So hopefully it pulls this bed up and I can straighten it up and then put some posts in and get that structurally sound. Let's see how we go. If I brace it there and then the force is coming this way and then it'll pull up that way. Yeah, that'll be good. And one more brace, I think. And there. Thankfully, it's long enough. All right. That's one. Rightio, that's the three. I'll just start slowly tightening them all up, a little bit at a time, and then we'll see if we can pull this in. You can certainly feel the tension. Get out of the way or I'll stand on you. Go on, get, stop it. I'm trying to work here. Well, I think I can get two posts in here now. So that'll be good enough. It's never gonna be perfect, but at least I can get them in almost perpendicular so that it's close as possible to this wall here. Come on you, it's dangerous. It's the next day, and I tell you what, I was feeling a little bit sore from all that digging yesterday, but I had a good sleep. I slept like a log. Well, this isn't a log. This is actually a, well, I suppose it's a pine log covered in plastic. Now, this is recycled plastic from Wood Shield. Now, you know I like to reuse plastics and support the reusable sustainable plastic industry because i don't think plastics are going anywhere but i don't like it when they go into the ocean and our waterways and just get discarded in horrible places to blow across the desert and infest our beautiful landscape so that's why i support companies that are trying to make a difference by recycling plastic into these other types of products. And they're also solving a problem at the same time. So what Woodshield have done here is they got a sustainable product, which is a wood product, which is pine, that grows fast. But the problem with pine is that it rots easy unless it's treated. So a lot of pine wood for building and for gardening, is even garden beds, comes out treated with an arsenic product, which can leach out into the soil or into your garden beds. Not too much, it's not a lot to be worried about, but it still is uh, an extra chemical that we don't really need. But instead of treating the pine, they're using recycled plastic made from soft plastics that have already been used, and they melt that down, and then they coat the pine to protect the pine from termites, insects, the weather, and all those types of things that would easily rot pine in just maybe even a year. Instead, this could last many decades because it's coated in this recycled plastic. So there's no chemicals, nothing's gonna leach out. There's no microplastics or anything going to rub off and get into your food system. It doesn't work like that. And at the end of its life, if say it's cracking and there's heaps of holes being drilled in because you can drill into this and you can tack things onto it. It won't compromise the post at all. At the end of its life, what you can do is completely recycle the whole thing. The wood inside gets chipped down and 
can be turned into wood chip and other things that can be used and the plastic on the outside well then it just gets stripped and then recycled into more recycled plastic so i think it's a good thing it's a win-win you're not especially for a gardener who's a bit concerned about chemicals in the garden if you're going to be using posts for certain things or for food products you know they use these at oyster leases now so instead of using treated posts or really good hardwood which is getting harder to find and of course takes a really long time to grow and is expensive they're using these now for in the water so that they can grow oysters on them it's such a really good product and I just love supporting it. And if you can find a way to support Wood Shield and other plastic companies like them, I say go for it. Brand new post hole digger. Never used one of these before. Got through that wet clay nicely. Back the post in. Beautiful. Now let's jam all this clay and loamy soil back into the hole. I'll use this just to jam it in to make sure it's really nice and solid. Just keep packing that dirt down. This post hole digger worked pretty well. Okay, so I'll keep going down and we'll keep working on it until we got all the posts in. I'll tell you what that was a lot of work this is the third day so a couple of days solid really and I just wanted to leave it until this morning so that I could summarize the build but before I do that what I'd like to do is get the bed ready and also plant it out why not so I've got some fertilizer here blood and bone I'll put that down first then of course mulch 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 and then i'm going to plant a few cucumbers along here with some tomatoes it's a bit late for cucumbers to be honest but i might get a, a few fruit out of them i've had them sitting here for a while in small containers and they've been growing pretty well so we'll see how they go transplanted out here but it is the season for tomatoes and i want to plant them along this side on the other side here i've got some peas growing and some other brassicas, broccoli and kale growing in the garden bed. And the peas, of course, are gonna grow up the trellis. And I've grown peas on this trellis many times and it really does work a treat. It goes together like a pea in a pod. So let me just sprinkle this fertilizer down first. Watering it in, it just blends the fertilizer in with the soil, wets it down, and it means that it won't burn the roots or any new seedlings that I put in. And the reason why 
I like to water this in before mulching is because when you put the mulch on top then the water doesn't penetrate as easy and you can't spread it like I'm doing now. You can of course put you know solid fertilizer on top of mulch and it will go through and break down eventually that's fine but I just like to do this initially because it's it's just easier. This is just a sugar cane mulch. You can use whatever you can use wood chip you can use grass clippings as long as it hasn't got seed in it of course straw without seed oh, lots of things but sugarcane seems to be one of the easiest and and sort of cost effective ways for us to do it you can't get sugarcane mulch everywhere and not all around the world but here in australia it's plentiful i tend to mulch first before i plant because then i can part the mulch and then plant in or sow seed or I can make furrows really easy. What it's hard to do is to sow seed or plant out and then mulch around it. That's more time consuming. I sometimes wear a mask when I'm doing mulch because you can get the small particles. Um, it's a good idea to wear a mask. It's a good way to use up those masks that uh, we all had to have for you know why and now we don't use them anymore but uh, today I'm not wearing a mask a bit of breeze and that blows the dust away and now I'm just watering in the mulch because it'll suppress the dust and it'll also in the wind it'll keep that mulch nice and heavy sitting on top of the bed and it'll mold into the bed in time and won't get blown away And all I'm doing here is sharking it. Just doing the old shark, making a little mini ditch. And then I'm gonna lay these celery seedlings in it. And then I'm gonna just fold the soil over. And then they'll all be planted. And of course, you have to water in. This is vitally important to settle those roots of those seedlings in, get that soil around them and get some water into them. Nice and delicate, not on full strength. And that's the planting out done. I've still got some room along the middle there if I wanna put some salad crops in lettuce asian greens but overall i'm really happy with how this project has come along it was a tough gig and i think i've got to start with the lesson the main mistake i made was not putting those posts into the ground i needed to do that i should have done that from the beginning they should have gone down at least 600 mil you could say 400 or 40 centimeters but i reckon 60 especially in this loamy clay type soil when it gets wet it can start to move a little bit so the further down the better to give it a really good sturdy strong long raised garden bed so that it won't push over over time due to the slope i put in 12 posts overall i ended up putting 
eight posts at the back here because I thought that it needed it to get that extra support. But then as I was thinking about it, it became even more prominent to me about a secondary use for these posts. And that is a trellis for these round plastic raised garden beds from Plastic Forest. Another recycled plastic material. Check this out, all I need to do is, because I've got all these posts in, I can put a trellis anywhere I want. Could be across here, across this one. It could be between the two beds. Just tie them onto the post. Yeah. So there's the secondary use for it. I really like it. So not only is it providing support for the bed, but it's now a trellis as well. The other thing I did was I made these posts on the inside here. I didn't put them in that far because I wanted them to have enough height to be able to push this mesh up. And I got rid of all those white PVC posts that I had in, except for two on the other end here. The rest of them aren't needed now because these big strong things are not only holding this up and are giving it a really good lot of height, it's also butting up against this other side of the garden bed, meaning that it won't bow out this way now either. Overall, I'm pretty wrapped and proud of this last few days effort correcting this garden bed. I mean, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big, don't make this mistake, thumbs up and share the video around because that always helps my content overall on my channel. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.